Once again, welcome to Bite Sized Essentials. Do like this video, forward it to your friends, and subscribe to us. Turn on receive all notifications so you won't miss any updates. Greetings, language mavericks! Buckle up for a ride through the whimsical world of English grammar, a place where sentences dance and words perform acrobatics. Today, we're diving headfirst into the giggles and groans, the chuckles and challenges of 30 common grammatical errors that even the language wizards among us once juggled. Picture this as a comedy show where grammar takes center stage, with a dash of confusion and a sprinkle of enlightenment. Now, let's embark on a journey where the team are playing well becomes a superstar rock band and yesterday, I see a movie morphs into a time-traveling escapade. Together, we'll navigate the linguistic roller coaster, embracing the blunders with laughter and turning grammatical mishaps into stars of our comedic constellation. 1. Subject Verb Agreement Picture this, the team are playing well. Oh no, team, it's not are, it's is. Teams are like a superstar, singular. So, the team is playing well, like the rock stars they are. 2. Verb Tense Yesterday, I see a movie. Sounds like time travel, right? But in English, we stay grounded. It's more like, yesterday, I saw a movie. We keep our time-traveling adventures in the realm of sci-fi, not grammar. 3. Articles, A and The Now, she is a doctor in the New York. Almost there. It's she is a doctor in New York. No, the, just the big apple and a stethoscope. Easy, right? 4. Use of prepositions. I am good in playing tennis. Well, good isn't good enough here. It's I am good at playing tennis. You're not just good, you're a tennis maestro in the making. 5. Double negatives. I don't need no help. Ah, the old double negative sneak attack. It's I don't need any help. Two negatives cancel each other out, leaving you with a positive plea for assistance. 6. Incorrect word order. He always late is. Yoda? Close, but in English, it's he is always late. Save the backward talk for Jedi training. 7. Misusing adverbs and adjectives. She performed good on the test. Bravo for effort. But it's she performed well on the test. Think of it as acing the language Olympics. 8. Misplacing modifiers. I almost ate all the cookies. Cookies disappearing in a blink? It's I ate almost all the cookies. Now, your cookie adventures make grammatical sense. 9. Incorrect use of gerunds and infinitives. I like to swim more than dancing. Almost there. It's I like swimming more than dancing. Now you're gracefully navigating the waters of English. 10. Confusing there, there, and there. They're going to the park. Hold the fort. It's they're going to the park. Their spelling skills are top-notch, but let's throw in the right version for the outing. 11. Confusing its and its. The dog wagged its tail. Cute, but it's the dog wagged its tail. No apostrophe, the tail belongs to the dog, not to it. 12. Use of much and many. I don't have much friends. It's a friendly mistake. It's I don't have many friends. Counting friends is like collecting treasures, go big. 13. Misuse of fewer and less. I have less books than you. Ah, a literary conundrum. It's I have fewer books than you. Now you're the librarian of correct grammar. 14. Incorrect use of me and I. Me and John went to the store. Almost there. 
It's John and I went to the store. You and John, the dynamic duo of proper grammar. 15. Confusing bring and take. Imagine this. Can you bring me to the airport? Oops, wrong suitcase. It's can you take me to the airport? Bring your English skills along for the ride. 16. Misuse of whose and whose. Whose book is this? A mystery novel. But it's whose book is this? No detective needed, just the right question. 17. Confusing good and well. I'm doing good. Superhero status. Yet, it's I'm doing well. Even superheroes need proper adverbs. 18. Incorrect use of can and may. Can I borrow your pen, please? Almost there. It's may I borrow your pen, please? Politeness level, English aristocrat. 19. Using like as a conjunction. It looks like it's going to rain. Not a weather report. It's it looks as if it's going to rain. Cue the meteorological drama. 20. Misusing who and whom. Whom is going to the party? Formal, but not quite. It's who is going to the party. Party grammar unlocked. 21. Confusing between and among. She had to choose between many options. Middle ground? Nope. It's she had to choose among many options. Options galore. 22. Incorrect use of farther and further. The store is further away than I thought. Almost there. It's the store is farther away than I thought. Distance measured like a pro. 23. Confusing fewer and less. I have less time than you. Time's ticking, but it's I have fewer hours than you. Quantify those hours. 24. Using so and such correctly. It's so a beautiful day. Sounds poetic. Yet, it's it's such a beautiful day. Poetry with proper grammar, a masterpiece. 25. Misuse of like and as. She sings like an angel. An angelic voice. Yet, it's she sings as an angel. Precision in simile, maestro in metaphor. 26. Confusing between and among. She had to choose between many options. Familiar crossroads? It's she had to choose among many options. Choosing among the stars. 27. Incorrect use of nor. She doesn't like tea nor coffee. A tea rebel. It's she likes neither tea nor coffee. Equal opportunity dislike her. 28. Confusing bring and take. Can you bring me to the airport? Another round? It's can you take me to the airport? Take off in grammatical style. 29. Incorrect use of too and enough. The coffee is too hot I can't drink it. Hot stuff. Yet, it's the coffee is so hot that I can't drink it. Sip carefully. 30. Misuse of during and while. I read a book while my lunch. Multitasking mastery. Yet, it's I read a book during my lunch. Lunchtime reading, anyone? And there you have it, fellow language explorers. We've braved the wild jungles of English grammar, swinging from vines of misplaced modifiers, dodging the double negative quicksand, and conquering the mountain peaks of confusing bring and take. Today's adventure was more than just correcting sentences, it was a voyage of laughter and learning. So, as we bid adieu to our grammatical escapade, remember, language is a quirky friend that loves a good laugh and forgives the occasional slip-up.
Keep playing with words, keep dancing with sentences, and may your journey through the vast landscapes of English be as joyous as a well-timed punchline. Until next time, happy grammatical adventures! Do remember to like and forward our video and subscribe to us!